From time to time, a stadium is built too big. It's usually a matter of misjudgment, of demand for tickets, or predicted practical uses for the space. In this video, we will take a look at four former stadiums that were built too big. So first on this list, we have Cleveland Municipal Stadium. This stadium opened with a capacity of just north of 80,000, somewhere between 80 to 82,000 max capacity. And when the Cleveland Indians switched from League Park to Cleveland Stadium in the 1940s, they were going from a stadium that held just over 21,000 people to a stadium that held nearly four times that number. And aside from a few good years at the beginning of their tenure there, the Indians would go on a historic 40-year playoff drought which would end two years after the stadium finally closed for baseball in 1993. So you would have a lot of bad baseball played here and it would lead to very small crowds through most of the Indians time there. Now the stadium would fill pretty well and fairly full through most of the Browns tenure there. But the problem with Cleveland Stadium, unlike other multi-purpose stadiums that were built afterward, is that Cleveland Stadium was not convertible at all between the two sports practically. And what I mean is that most of the cookie cutter stadiums and some of the other multi-purpose stadiums were able to have retractable seating or changes in the seating arrangements that would make the stadium smaller on its own while also fitting to the shape of the field. Cleveland Stadium had none of that, so the capacity for baseball games was essentially the same as it would be for football games, and the field would just have a wall run through it to mark where home runs could be hit because it was just too deep. So overall, as a baseball stadium, definitely way too big, and as a football stadium, I mean, it worked, but it was still fairly pretty big for NFL standards when compared to other multi-purpose stadiums built, such as the subsequent cookie-cutter stadiums. Next on this list is Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii, which would open in 1975 at a capacity of 50,000. It wouldn't appear on its face that it's that big for college football, but you have to remember where this stadium is, and that is on an island that is thousands of miles away from the U.S. mainland. It's not to say that Hawaii can't draw 50,000, but being on an island, it is much more difficult, and they would have attendance issues during the period that they would play here. It's also not a powerhouse football team, and you're probably not going to get too many concerts that can fill it either, just based on the size of the market around it. Aside from the fact of the logistics of having concerts there being a tremendous challenge. Yes, the Pro Bowl could pretty much fill this stadium up, but really honestly you can't really justify having such a large stadium for one game a year. And they are working to remedy this issue by the new stadium that is going to be built having only half the capacity that the old one did. Next I have the original, original Soldier Field. So the very first version of this stadium was built in a U-shape where the sides would go way out further than a football field would ever need to be. And yes, it was not built to be a football stadium specifically, but rather a flexible event space that could seat anywhere from around 75,000 to 100,000 people. This one was really too big just because it was just built really big as a structure as in it went so far down further than you know a field would need now they would remedy this by building stands on the one end zone however that would leave thousands and thousands of seats that were basically useless so really this one was built too big just as far as the area of the stands is concerned and not necessarily so much the capacity and lastly, we have JFK Stadium, also known as Philadelphia Municipal Stadium. It was similar to Soldier Field in that it was built as more of an exhibition space originally. So that means that seating would have to go further back and higher on the main grandstand since it was only covering three sides. Back then, to accommodate the high-capacity crowds of the Army-Navy game, temporary train stations would be built next to the stadium. Aside from the Eagles being there a few years, which wouldn't require 100,000 generally speaking, 
capacity wise. This stadium was hardly ever going to need that much capacity. There wasn't some powerhouse college football team playing here. You had the Army-Navy game there for many years, but that's just one game a year. But given its size, really other than as a concert venue, there really wasn't much that could be done to put this to a proper use because it was frankly just too big. And it was probably part of why it was left in disrepair, at which by 1989 it was finally condemned and they would finally close it, with demolition occurring in 1992. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Are there other ones you think should be on this list? Let me know, and thank you for watching.